Hello and welcome to another episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, today I want to introduce our new yarn collection to you. Um, it's our first kind of proper summer collection and I'm really happy um, to share this one with you. I hope to keep this video slightly short because um, for the first time in a pretty long while we are only going to release one new yarn base that I'm going to introduce to you in a bit. So first of all I'll give you a little overview on the new yarn and uh, then I'll show you um, the colorways and at the end we're gonna have a little admin section and I'm gonna let you know what else is going to be coming for the July collection because I will recommend sticking until the end I'll tell you a bit more of a sale coming up um, which I always know is interesting um, but without further ado let me start with uh, the video and introduce the new yarn to you so the new yarn uh, is our first summer blend that we ever created and it is uh, called linen which is um, a middle high German word for the line so the flax plant uh, and the linen fiber and this one is going to be available in a four ply and a DK weight um, the four ply being um, 200 meters per 50 grams and the DK version being 115 meters per, per 50 grams um, and that is also the first thing I want to stress about this yarn for the first time is coming in 50 grams gains instead of 100 because I've kind of thought it would be handy to have slightly smaller skeins um, for small summer projects just so you don't have to you know, purchase two full 100 gram skeins for a small little top and then be left with like 50 grams. So yeah, I kind of tried to uh, switch it all up a little bit. Um, the blend is a 25% unbleached naturally colored um, linen and 75% naturally colored like an old meal, oatmeal beige uh, blue face Leicester fiber. And that is because we tried to kind of mimic the color of natural unbleached linen fibers in this yarn um, and without further ado let me show it to you so this is the new linen blend in its undyed shade and here you can see how we try to mimic the shade of undyed um, unbleached sorry unbleached um, linen because this is I told this in the dedicated video uh, that I'll also upload about this base and also link here in case you're curious about samples and swatches and all the backstory. But yeah, parts of it is that I'm just such a lover of the natural shade of linen fabric and I, whenever I do sewing projects I reach for it. So yeah, this was a dream come true when we started uh, curating this yarn blend and it was a lot of fun. So the top skein is the four ply version and the bottom skein is the DK weight version um, and they mostly differ by weight and by the fact that the four ply version is a two ply so it has two singles applied together and the DK is a three ply. Um, by the way I am wearing uh, my sample out of this uh, new yarn which is the Give me the T t-shirt. I'm slightly too short and I can't get up at the moment because I have uh, the camera too close to my face. But it's um, just a beautiful t-shirt, um, very, you know, minimalistic uh, with a couple of clever details such as folded um, sleeves and a folded neckline and a folded hem. So I knitted this one in a size 4 and it has, I don't know if you can see, but it has quite some positive ease. So it's very generously sized, I would say. Um, and I wanted to have this uh, to wear it over dresses or like high-waisted um, pants or something like that. And amount-wise, uh, we used 
300, around 350 grams of the DK weight version of the new linen blend. And this is also the undyed shade. So just in case you're curious, <laughs> I hope to potentially uh, insert some footage of me wearing this and showing it a bit more, but um, yeah, just if I manage and remember to record that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the new blend and this is actually how it looks in some swatches. So I show this more in depth in the dedicated video. Let me put this one back because it's just not very helpful. Um, but yeah, these are the fault ply and the DK version knitted into swatches. And yeah, in that dedicated video, I also share a couple of pattern suggestions. So I definitely recommend you checking it out. I will also link it down below. And I guess without further ado, I'm going to share the colorways that we dyed on this one with you. So for the colorways, we tried to get something ready that so that everyone can have something they like. So we tried to uh, get quite a wide variety of a palette um, and we dyed all the colorways on both yarn weights. So I'm going to show them all to you on the 4-ply version, but they will also be available on the DK version like we did with some other bases in the past, just because I feel like this gives the most flexibility for you so you can purchase according to whatever pattern you might want to knit. Um, and one thing that's particularly interesting about this base, and I really hoped for this to happen, and it luckily happened, is that um, with natural dyeing, it's um, cellulose fibers and protein fibers take dyes differently. And a cellulose fiber, for example, is linen, and a protein fiber is wool. So you kind of have different bases to treat before you dye them. And usually it is the case that you have to prepare or mordant um, cellulose fibers in a different way than you do woolen fibers or protein fibers. And due to this, I had I really hoped that the, the linen content would pick up the natural dyes differently than uh, the wool kind of content would, resulting in kind of like a heathered effect. Um, and I can show you in one of the colorways uh, later on, but it's, you know, that's something that I really enjoy about it. And with some dyes, especially the ones that really require um, mordanting, you know, there are a couple of dyes that don't require mordanting as such, um, because they have a, a mordanting substances in themselves. But let me not go <laughs> into that rabbit hole now. Um, but for some of the colorways, you will see that they have this beautiful heathered effect. And I'm so happy about this because it really made me so happy when I was dyeing it. It was so new and so nice and I really enjoyed it. Anyhow, let me start out with showing you the colorways. So first of all, we'll have two kind of one-of-a-kind colorways that were dyed with walnut uh, holes and um, due to that fact they are not repeatable so they are kind of one-of-a-kinds and I'm just going to call them after what they are dyed with. So this one is Walnut one. It's a beautiful light beige with a very neutral undertone, I would say. So this one is the Walnut one. And we have a slightly more saturated version of this one. And that's Walnut two. I don't know if you can see the heathered effect too much in here because the Walnut is one of the dyes that um, can also dye cellulose fibers without a certain different mordant because it has tannins in it and those help to bind to the cellulose fibers as well. Um, so yeah, that one is Walnut 2 and don't worry I'm gonna show all the beige <laughs> in, uh, you know, next to each other just so you can see them a bit better. Next one we dyed a new kind of beige colorway and that one is called hazel it's a little more orange peach in undertone than the walnut ones the walnut ones are less warm in undertone 
and this one has some orangey shades. So yeah, this one is hazel, and just so you can see them all um, in comparison, this one here, we're starting here, this is the undyed um, natural color, then we have walnut one, Walnut 2, I don't know if you can see the difference that much on camera, I hope you can. <laughs> and then we have the hazel on the other side, so that one is quite more, a bit more reddish. Let me see if I can show the two walnut shades a bit better. Yeah, this way it's more visible. So this is walnut 1 and this is walnut 2. It's always a bit tricky because the camera picks up some things better and some things not so well. So. Hope it's gonna be visible anyways. Um, next up we're going into the kind of pink uh, region and I've also tried to have a colorway for everyone that would, you know, whether you prefer slightly more punchy, cooler shades or some more warm shades. So we're starting out with the colorway Hawthorne and this one is the one that I knitted my Nupulan shawl uh, sample in which I show all in depth in my in the dedicated video about the um, about this yarn base so yeah this one is Hawthorne it's something between like a pink and a brown and I personally really like it and think it's very wearable next up we have mahogany and in this one you can really see the heathered effect um, of the slightly lighter um, linen fibers which I absolutely love I think it makes this colorway so lively and I don't know I just love it so that one is mahogany then we will also have magenta and it's a beautiful saturated very pink in which you can also see the beautiful heathering of the linen. I absolutely love this one. Can you focus camera? Hello? Okay, doesn't want to focus. Here we go. So yeah, that one is magenta. And next up we have an almost classic by now for the ones of you who like the slightly cooler shades and this one is lavender it's like a grayish purple and you can also see the slight heathering in this yarn which I absolutely love so yeah this is kind of the pink purple uh, region I would say and let me hold them up all together again just so it's a bit easier to envision uh, so this one is Hawthorne then we have mahogany magenta and lavender here I just love how this shade kind of gives a muted effect but in a very sophisticated way I don't know the natural color of the yarn I just love every shade that's dyed on it kind of I don't know very happy and next up we have mm, let me transition into this phase kind of we have a new colorway um, and this one is called fern and it's like a light mossy no not mossy it's more like a chartreuse kind of green yellow and I think it's very summery so this one is fern it's like an olive green as well so kind of that way next up we have a green that is a one of a kind as well but I still wanted to give it a name just because I absolutely love this one um, but it's a one of a kind and it's not repeatable because this one is actually one of the outcomes um, from the day where I was dying with my friend Viola of Atelier Fon and we were dying with plants from her garden and this one has been dyed with dyer's chamomile um, that was 
blooming and flourishing in her garden when we met. And also some indigo. So, but this one is seagrass. And it's just a beautiful, variegated green blue. It has a lot of variegation throughout the skeins. I hope that's visible. And I absolutely love this shade. It's I'm having a really hard time not keeping some for myself. But yeah, this is seagrass. And this one, as well as the next two shades, as mentioned, are complete one-of-a-kinds, so we're not able to reproduce these. Um, so this one is another indigo dyed shade called Indigo One, and it's a beautiful, light, steely blue. I absolutely love how it turned out on this base. In this one you can see the heathered effect slightly less because indigo dyeing works different than other natural dyes and it doesn't require a mordant. So um, yeah, cellulose fibers take up the indigo as well as the blue, uh, the wool fibers, the protein fibers. Maybe not in the completely exact same way, but you know. And this one is indigo too. A slightly more saturated indigo blue that I absolutely love. It's so hard to hold up these small skeins because these will be available in 50 gram skeins instead of our regular 100 grams because I thought it's kind of handy to have, you know, for smaller summer projects to have smaller skeins but I have to hold them so much closer to the camera that I'm really stretching and my back starts to hurt to be honest. But yeah, I'm going to show you the kind of green blue uh, color family as well. So from this from this side to this side we have fern, then we have seagrass, indigo one and indigo two. I love this combo as well. It's so pretty. I also kind of feel very drawn towards combining um, hawthorn and mahogany because I just, I don't know what it is, but I just love this combination. It feels like as if this is like the hawthorn is the younger sibling of mahogany. I don't know. But yeah, I really like that combo. And I guess that is everything for today. This colorway preview will be quite a bit shorter <laughs> than my usual ones, but that's because we only have this one base that we are kind of restocking or let's say introducing for the first time. Um, I will still tell you a bit more about of what is still available and what will be available in the July collection, but this is everything we have on the new linen base. As said, all available in 4-ply and DK version and in 50 gram skeins, so please uh, yeah, just really think through how many skeins you might need because I always get so confused. I'm so used to the 100 gram skeins, but yeah, with the 50 grams it's a bit confusing. Um, but I hope it's helpful for you that you can maybe plan a bit more um, according to the actual amount you might need. So less waste is always good, right? <laughs> but yeah, without further ado, let me jump to the little admin section and let you know what else is coming for the July collection. Okay, a little bit of admin things because um, this collection that I just showed you is going to launch on the 28th of July at 8 p.m. CET, but that's not all that we'll have. Um, because we have quite a bit of back stock, you might have realized. We still have quite a bit in the shop at the moment, and I want to be very transparent with you. Um, this is something that is kind of limiting me a little bit in my creativity because it takes up space, and I don't know, I like to be, um, you know, finished with some collections and then start the next one. And this you know, with this amount of back stock, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's limiting me a little bit for my next projects. And although I'm not a big fan um, of sales, um, 
we will run a little sale more on that later but i want to uh, say a few sentences about sales because it's not usually something i enjoy to do um because i feel it's more of a learned practice on how to run a business and it's more like uh, unwritten rules that you have to do sales every now and then to keep people um you know interested in your products and that's, that just doesn't um, align with my values and how I want to value my work. Um, because, you know, I want to raise awareness for all the work that goes into naturally dyed yarn. And I want to raise awareness for everyone involved in the process from, you know, the shearing, uh, the shepherds and shearers and mills to whenever it's dyed by me. And I don't know, it somehow doesn't work for me that I'm like, just because people expect sales at certain times of the year, for example, um, I don't really enjoy to, you know, go with this kind of business-driven model and just because it's kind of a rule, follow it because everyone expects it from me. That's just not how I work. However, I have to say that with how it's limiting me and my creativity to have this much backstock, um, I want to, you know, use the... Um, option of a sale to rehome a couple more skeins of this backstock um, just so I can continue and get some things done. I should also maybe mention why we are having so much backstock um, because you know that we have been renovating a new studio space um, in the last couple of months and there have been some like on top of the expenses that came with this there have been a couple of issues. Um, so we had some water damage in different areas and some of it still being fixed, which is also the reason why I'm still here at the old studio. And I'm going to update you on all that in a dedicated episode. I hope to record that episode next week where I'm updating you on some life things and my knitting projects. But yeah, short version is we still have in one of the storage cellars, we have a water issue. And it has not been fixed yet and I'm refusing to put anything there of, you know, my storage, uh, my yarn that has already arrived and, you know, I don't want to risk anything, you know, being damaged. And so things are postponed and there were a couple of unplanned expenses due to these water damages. And all in all, um, I felt really pressured to produce as much as I could over the last couple of months and to have as much stock to make as much revenue as I could to, you know, fill up my savings and not my, my personal savings, but my business savings. And yeah, to just be transparent with you, I might have done or made too much for what was required or requested over the past couple of weeks. And while it's not a huge lot that we're still having, um, I guess I would like to kind of a fresh start with the new studio after all the setbacks. And I decided, even though I'm not a big fan of making a lot of sales and we just had the moving sale a couple of months ago, um, but I decided it might be better also for my business and my mind. And <laughs> it's a nice opportunity for you to maybe save on a couple of gains um, or maybe try and make it's also a way for me to make my yarn more accessible um, temporarily so yeah without further ado there will be a big back stock sale of 20% off everything except the new linen yarn and you will not need any code or so it will just go live with the sale uh, with the shop update on uh, next Friday 28th 8 p.m. Um, so yeah, no code needed. It will just automatically discount all the uh, bases except for the new one. Um, and so you can just shop uh, at a reduced rate of 20% off. Um, the sale will run until Sunday 11.30 p.m. CET. So please keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to start packing on Monday. And I want to have, you know, a certain date. It's I don't want to keep this for forever. So um, like keep the sale on for forever so yeah it's gonna be from Friday to Sunday you'll have time to shop this big big summer sale and I hope you'll enjoy and that you'll find something at a slightly reduced price 
um, that will make you happy. So far about the summer sale. Um, another thing I want to mention, again, I know I've mentioned this in episodes before, but um, with everything going on at the moment and a lot of projects going on at the same time, um, I want to ask you a couple of things to make the packing situation slightly easier for me because yeah, for August we have plans. Before I'm going on vacation there are a lot of projects that still need to be finished up so I can go on vacation like with ease. And you would really help me if you could support me with um, how you shop. And that specifically means that um, if you can avoid multiple orders that I need to combine, that would be wonderful. I'm sorry I have to say this and I'd love to just offer this service without any issues, but to be really honest, I recently tried to figure out how much longer it takes me to to do a combined order and everything. There are so many things that I have to do manually instead of through my shop system and I came up with something like six times more than a regular order needs to be fulfilled and yeah I mean I cannot say that it's it's stressful with shop updates. I 100% get that and I'm going to keep uh, doing this service but wherever you can avoid placing multiple orders, it would save me so much time and with these packing situations, you know, I'm still pretty much a one-woman show and I have my family to help me but these packing sessions are always a lot of stress and, um, you know, if, if you could make it easier for me that would be just lovely, to be honest. And also, if you end up placing multiple orders, because I know in some cases it's just not possible or there's an issue, I don't know, I don't blame uh, anyone doing it. Um, if it happens, then please help me finding your orders, because I cannot automatically find them in my shop system. It doesn't tell me that there's like two orders from the same person. So you will need to email me at hello at woolentwine.com with your two order numbers. It would be lovely if you could support me a little bit that way and I hope it's not too much to ask. Um, I just kind of want to stay sane <laughs> with all this and I'm so thankful for all the support that I'm receiving and I'm just so happy that there's always, you know, that I always have this stress with the packing because that means that you support me and I'm just really, really thankful. But I'm trying to learn more about my own boundaries and about my how I can, you know, how I can kind of value my own time and my own priorities and uh, in this case I have to be honest that it's just it's just a lot of extra work that I'm always happy if I don't have to do it because it just takes a lot of time. Anyhow, enough of that. Um, yeah, the whole thing will uh, launch on the 28th uh, of July at 8 p.m. CET and I think last but not least I want to um, remind you of the fact that uh, for some of these spaces this backstock sale is the last chance to get them. So we are kind of discontinuing our Corridale sock base as mentioned in the last video and there's like a, ha a handful of mini skeins, some sock sets and a couple of single skeins and this will be the last option to get this base until further notice. Um, same goes for our Heritage DK and 4ply because this one is a limited edition locally sourced yarn and even though if, if, um, even if I would keep working with the same people um, the yarn blend might be different so it's not it's going not going to be back um, in this exact same way so it's the last chance to get Heritage. We put everything up in the shop now um, and this back stock sale is the last chance um, to get this base. So yeah, that is what I wanted to remind you of. Um, I guess that is everything for today. As always, if you need any help, feel free to email me at hello at woolentwine.com. I will try to uh, message back as quickly as possible in the next upcoming week. Um, but please uh, bear with me if it takes me a day or two, just because I'm still a one-woman show. <laughs> and 
yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I'm really happy to release this new yarn into your hands <laughs> and into the world. And I hope you will love it as much as I do. Um, and yeah, I guess, happy summer knitting and see you next week. Bye.